So case of a 33 year old woman presenting to the uh, emergency department with headache, nausea and vomiting. These are the images. So this is the uh, flare image and uh, this is uh, the uh, you can see the grease sequence and the DWI sequence. So in the uh, this uh, in the T2 flare in the flare image uh, there is hyper intensity and uh, mass effect within the deep gray nuclei and adjacent white matter. Uh, the D, uh, the grease sequence, the T2 star weighted grease sequence shows the susceptibility related uh, signal loss here. As you can see, susceptibility related signal loss, uh, which is consistent with hemorrhage or venous congestion. Here, this image, this is the DWI, and uh, it reveals the focal restricted diffusion in the right thalamus with the normal or elevated diffusion we can say elsewhere. So, this one. This is the 2D time of flight uh, MR venogram and it shows the absence uh, of flow related enhancement in the deep venous uh, structures including the internal cerebral veins in the vein of Galen and the straight sinus. So the differentials in this case would uh, include uh, uh, viral encephalitis, lymphoma, glioma, basilar artery or the artery of Percheron occlusion and uh, Adam. However, the diagnosis here in this case is the cerebral venous thrombosis and infarction. Next case, 9-year-old boy with headache. These are the images. So, uh, this is a key, uh, case, of, this is the case of pineoblastoma. Uh, as you can see here, that... Uh, there is a large penile region mass and the mass has peripheral calcifications and generally uh, it is of higher attenuation than the this is the mass and it is uh, generally of uh, it has this is the peripheral calcification and it has higher attenuation than the cerebral parenchyma. Also as you can see with the dilatation of the horns, uh, occipital horns uh, that uh, there is a uh, moderate obstructive hydrocephalus due to the deformation of the tectum and uh, uh, of course the compression of the uh, cerebral aqueduct here we can see that the cerebral aqueduct is being compressed so compression of the cere cerebral aqueduct with the uh, transependymal edema this is the uh, transependymal edema at the occipital horns of the lateral ventricles so this is the description of the mass that this uh, this is pineoblastoma of course the differentials will include germ cell tumor uh, pineocytoma meningioma and astrocytoma of the tectum thalamus or corpus callosum uh, and uh, the management is of course the treatment of the hydrocephalus is the first step and it is important to obtain the mri of the brain and spine to detect the tumor dissemination throughout the csf prior to surgery and uh, the treatment, of course, in, will include surgical resection uh, with craniospinal radiation and chemotherapy. So, next, this is the case uh, of a 46 year old man with a one week history of fever, fatigue, and myalgia. So, he presented to the ER with confusion, memory impairment, and speech difficulties. So these are the images. So as you can see in these images, this is the flare sequence and uh, it shows the uh, hyper intense signal involving the cortex and the adjacent subcortical white matter of the uh, medial and uh, anterior left temporal lobe as well as the uh, posterior aspect of the this as well as the posterior aspect of the left gyrus rectus. So this is the DWI sequence and of course it is hyper intense in these areas. Um, also also we can see uh, that um, this is the post contrast sequence and uh, there is very subtle it's quite subtle uh, subtle cortical enhancement here there's very subtle enhancement here so on the post contrast sequence so this is a case of uh, herpes encephalitis uh, the diagnosis the main diagnosis will be herpes encephalitis this is the diagnosis and the other differentials will include uh, other viral encephalitis and limbic encephalitis and cerebral infarction and uh, glial or glioneuronal tumor and seizure edema in the status epilepticus 
So, these are the images of uh, the case of herpes encephalitis. Now, the management, uh, the diagnosis should be corroborated by CSF sampling with the PCR analysis for the HSV DNA and immediate treatment with the such antivirals as acyclovir and gencyclovir will limit the extent of injury. So, obviously, starting the immediate treatment along with corroborating it with CSF sampling. So, this is the next case, 55-year-old man who fell down the eight stairs. As you can see that uh, very easy, this is uh, the case of epidural hematoma and uh, because there is uh, in this image we can see that there this is CT uh, image and there is a biconvex hyperdense section in the left frontal extra axial space and the brain is uh, displaced away uh, from the inner table of the skull. This is the inner table of the skull and the brain is being displaced away here. And uh, also in the bone window, we can see that there is an adjacent a depressed frontal bone fracture. So, uh, so this is a case of epidural hematoma, uh, secondary to this fracture. And the differentials will include subdural hematoma, of course, and meningioma. So, management is uh, all, all of these epidural hematomas are basically they are managed uh, surgically uh, with evacuation. So, next case, these are the images. The, there's a, the, this a patient is a child with a prior history of myelomeningocele repair and now has presented with vomiting. So, this is a case of uh, carry 2 malformation. As you can see that uh, the CT images show uh, towering cerebellum here. This is a towering cerebellum through a, a gaping um, tentorial incisura. This is the tentorial incisor which is gaping and through it uh, we can see there is a towering cerebellum. There is absence of the uh, septum pellucidum. This is deficient fox cerebri and narrow uh, gyri, the gyri are narrow uh, with shallow sulci posteriorly, shallow sulci and narrow gyri posteriorly. Now, these are the sagittal images, these are the uh, sorry uh, uh, CT images, axial CT images. Now, coming towards the uh, sagittal images of uh, this is the T1 weighted sequence and this is 2 weighted MRI. So, there is a low lying torcula. Here, there should be torcula. So, there is a low lying torcula herophily with a small posterior fossa and downward displacement of the cerebellum into the upper cervical canal, as we can see here, into the upper uh, cervical canal. Uh, and uh, there's a this, there's here, here we can see that there's small fourth ventricle, uh, there's small fourth ventricle uh, beak tectum here. This is the beak tectum and uh, narrow gyri posteriorly again, narrow gyri posteriorly and the thin, uh, this is the corpus callosum which is here, here we can see that this thinned out, the corpus callosum is thinned out and it is, it is dysgenetic, dysgenetic thinned out corpus callosum. So, this basically all these findings uh, are uh, pointing towards the case of uh, carry 2 malformation this is the diagnosis but the other differentials will include obviously carry 1 malformation and because of this uh, uh, downward pointing cerebellum we can put intracranial uh, CSF hypotension as well here in the differential CSF hypotension. So, the um, management will include the obviously the uh, myelomeningocele repair is at, dur done during uh, at the time of birth and uh, most patients will require the CSF shunting or diversion. Sometimes they undergo carry decompression at the craniocervical junction for improvement of the bulbar uh, symptoms of syringohydromyelia. Folate supplementation in the mother obviously decreases the risk. So, uh, uh, the, obviously there will be the uh, surgical management here. So, case of carry 2 malformation. Next case, uh, next is case of 35 year old uh, woman who came with hyperemesis gravidarum and confusion. These are the images. So, as we can see in these images uh, that uh, 
this is the flare sequence and it shows that there is hyper intense signal uh, over here in the bilateral medial thalami along the walls of the third ventricle. This is the third ventricle along its walls we can see that there is hyper intense signal along the walls of the uh, third ventricle. Also in the DWI sequence we can see that there is restricted diffusion in this area and uh, obviously then we have to corroborate it with the contrast enhanced sequence so we can see that there is no uh, enhancement in this region there is no enhancement in this uh, region so this is a case of Wernicke's encephalopathy uh, and uh, the other differentials will include the artery of percheron infarction uh, internal cerebral vein thrombosis and viral encephalitis this is the case Another case here, there is, we have a 74 year old man who uh, presented with frequent falls. This is the image. This is the only image that we have. So this is the axial CT scan and it shows a crescentic extra axial collection. Here we can see that there is the uh, crescentic uh, extra axial collection. Uh, along the right uh, cerebral convexity, uh, the collection is isoattenuating to the uh, gray matter, to the cerebral game, gray matter. And also note that the sulci, uh, the sulci along the right hemisphere, they do not reach the inner table of the skull. So this is the inner table of the skull and the sulci are here and they are not reaching the inner table of the skull. And here we can see that this, there is the this crescentic extra axial uh, collection. So obviously the uh, diagnosis here is uh, isodense subdural hematoma. So, okay, so the, the diagnosis is isodense subdural hematoma, and the, the differentials will include subdural empyema, subdural effusion, uh, thickened dura, uh, secondary to intracranial hypotension or sarcoidosis or uh, tuberculosis, and the extra axial tumors. Any extra axial tumors we can put them in the differentials as well, like meningiomas and lymphoma metastasis etc. So uh, this is the case of isodent subdural hematoma here. So next this is the case of a 54 year old woman with headache and obdentation and uh, these are the images. So as we can see that uh, this is the non-contrast CT scan and uh, it shows the uh, intraparenchymal hemorrhage in the left uh, uh, frontal lobe and uh, then downwards we have these uh, angiography images uh, and uh, these are catheter angiography images and they show severe narrowing of the distal left uh, internal carotid artery here severe narrowing of the this this there's severe narrowing of this distal uh, left internal carotid artery formation of uh, the small vessel collaterals these are the small vessel collaterals and uh, they are uh, resembling the puff of smoke appearance you know they're giving a puff of smoke appearance also uh, these are the early arterial images and uh, these are the uh, uh, these are both of these these are this is the right cca and this is left ICA. So this is left ICA late arterial image and this is right CCA late arterial image. So we can see that there is delayed flow into the uh, cortical branches of the um, left ACA. Okay, yeah, so here we can see that there is delayed flow. Uh, here we can see that there is delayed flow uh, of the um, into the cortical branches of the left uh, ACA and uh, of course the uh, middle cerebral arteries uh, here I'm talking about this this flow here here this was not present in the early arterial sequence and it is here present in the delayed sequence so here we can see that uh, the flow is present in the left ACA and middle cerebral arteries in the delayed scan and also the posterior cerebral artery uh, collaterals to the anterior circulation. This is the 
uh, these are the uh, PCA this is the PCA and uh, you can see uh, that uh, there are collaterals here uh, to the anterior collaterals are being given here to the anterior circulation here so this is a case of uh, moya moya disease and uh, the differentials will include vasculitis, atherosclerosis, and uh, arterial dissection, and that's it. Next case, 18-year-old man with headache, nausea, and double vision. These are the images. These are the images. So the non-contrast CT, this is non-contrast CT and it shows a small uh, mass surrounding the penile calcification. There is a small mass which is surrounding the penile calcification and its attenuation is slightly greater than that of the uh, gray matter. A uh, small enhancing uh, penile mass surrounds the coarse penile calcification and uh, here as we can see here. and uh, there is a separate enhancing mass here of the posterior pituitary. There is a separate enhancing mass here of the posterior pituitary uh, in fundibulum and the floor of the uh, third ventricle. Also, also there is nodular uh, sub in here we can see that there is nodular subependymal enhancement along the fourth ventricle. Uh, so, which is consistent with uh, CSF dissemination. So, this is a case of germinoma, penile germinoma, of course. This is a case of penile germinoma, and uh, uh, the differentials will include pineoblastoma and non germinomatous germ cell tumor, uh, glioblastoma multiform, that is GBM, and metastasis, of course, considering this uh, presentation. Next case, 14 year old boy with chronic headache. These are the images. So, there is a lesion here in the left cerebellar hemisphere which is hyper intense on uh, uh, T2 weighted images and uh, this, this here we can see this is hyper intense on T2 and uh, it is uh, iso to hypo on t1 weighted sequence so we can see that here this is iso to hypo on t1 weighted image and this is hyper intense on t2 weighted image and uh, also there is mild mass effect uh, this uh, the t2 weighted images they are showing a striated or uh, gyriform pattern within the lesion so this is a striated or gyriform pattern within the lesion and uh, these are the post contrast uh, images and uh, there is no enhancement there is absolutely no enhancement in this region so this is a case of lermite duclos disease uh, that is dysplastic gangliocytoma of the cerebellum Lermite Duclos disease, dysplastic gangliocytoma of the cerebellum, and uh, the other differentials uh, will obviously include the medulloblastoma and uh, uh, diffuse or pilocytic astrocytoma and cerebellar infarction, cerebellitis, and ganglioglioma. Next case 59 year old with flu like illness brought to the hospital after being found unresponsive and febrile in the bed at home. In bed at home. So these are the images. So as we can see that there are areas of uh, decreased diffusion and uh, hyper intense signal on t2 weighted images uh, in the on t2 weighted images in the brain stem and uh, here in the brain stem and lentiform nuclei internal capsule here lentiform nuclei internal capsule thalamus 
and uh, bilateral frontal lobes here bilateral frontal lobes and uh, also on the flare sequences there is a, a subtle hyper intense signal in several sulci there is very subtle hyper intense here in the, in, in the, we can see here there is very uh, subtle hyper intense signal here this is the flare sequence this is the flare sequence so there is subtle hyper intense signal in several sulci which is a non specific finding um, consistent with meningitis, subarachnoid hemorrhage or elevated CSF protein and uh, the post contrast sequence however it shows no abnormal enhancement this is a post contrast sequence and it shows no abnormal enhancement this is situated sequence and here we can see this abnormal hyper intensity hyper intense areas in the putamen and lentiform nuclei and uh, thalema and uh, internal capsule and uh, So, so this is a case of uh, infarct secondary to meningitis. So these are all infarcts which are secondary to uh, meningitis. And uh, among the differentials, uh, we can add vasculitis, early cerebritis, uh, septic emboli and uh, carcinomatous meningitis with infarction. Another case of 75 year old woman uh, presenting with the progressive dementia. So these are the images. So as we can see uh, that there are uh, numerous tiny foci of uh, hypo intensity on uh, here this is the uh, of hypo intensity this uh, this is the t2 weighted this is the gre sequence on t2 star gre imaging gradient echo imaging which are located at the cortical and subcortical regions and they are consistent with microbleeds uh, also we can see that here there is a sparing of the basal ganglia uh, there is sparing of thalami here thalami basal ganglia and the deep cerebral white matter. So there is sparing of this area and these are the uh, foci, these are the foci or foci of uh, hypo intensity at the cortical and subcortical region. So obviously the main diagnosis, uh, the basic, uh, uh, the top differential will be cerebral amyloid angiopathy and uh, uh, this is the diagnosis here and the differentials uh, will include the hypertensive micro hemorrhages and uh, diffuse exonal injury, multiple familial cavernous malformations and hemorrhagic metastasis and vasculitis. Next case, here we have a five year old uh, with mental status changes. These are the images. So this is a case of uh, ependymoma. As we can see that these on these non-contrast CT uh, images, uh, there is a mass, this here, there is a mass in the region of the fourth ventricle. It is isoattenuated and it has coarse internal uh, calcifications. Uh, this is the mass. On the T2 weighted sequence, uh, T2 weighted MRI sequence, we can see that it is hyper intense and uh, uh, it shows the this is the uh, this is the post contrast uh, sequence and it shows the heterogeneous enhancement here this is the heterogeneous enhancement this is the dwi sequence and we can see that there is uh, no diffusion uh, no restricted diffusion so there is no restricted diffusion apparent here in dwi sequence there is heterogeneous enhancement and uh, uh, th um, that's the uh, that's the characterization of the mass uh, these uh, T2 uh, hypo-intense foci here we can see yes there are small tiny T2 hypo-intense foci here so they may these are the tiny hypo-intense foci here here so they may represent calcification or uh, hemorrhage or uh, the small vessels and uh, the tumor 
uh, seems to be extending here it seems to be extending uh, through the foramina of lashka here these are the foramina of lashka here we can see this is the foramen the, the, these are the foramen of lashka and the tumor seems to be extending through them so uh, obviously the main diagnosis will be ependymoma this is the case of ependymoma the other differentials will include medulloblastoma choroid plexus papilloma atypical thyroid rhabdoid tumor atrt and cerebellar pilocytic astrocytoma next is the case of four year old boy presented with seizures these are the images so we can see uh, there is a, a small round here there is a small round uh, hypo intense that is t1 uh, hypo intense this is the t1 hypo intense and uh, over here we can see that this is a t2 hyper intense nodule uh, which is arising from the hypothalamus uh, and it is uh, adjacent and superior to the left mammillary body so this is t1 sagittal uh, this is t1 sequence this is t2 sequence it is hypo on t1 it is uh, hyper on t2 and it is rising it is a nodule which is rising from the hypothalamus and uh, so adjacent and superior to the left mammillary body also on the post contrast sequences uh, this is the post contrast sequence and we can see that uh, there is absolutely no enhancement within this lesion here it is the lesion and there is no enhancement in this lesion so the main uh, obviously the differential the top differential of, or i would i will say this is a case of hypothalamic hematoma and uh, the other differentials uh, will include this is a, basically uh, the top uh, the base, basic diagnosis hypothalamic hematoma and the other differentials will include low grade astrocytoma supracellular germinoma langerhans cell histiocytosis and uh, craniopharyngioma so next case 21 year old woman presenting to the ed after a generalized tonic clonic seizure these are the images so as you can see uh, that on ct there is a heterogeneous mass in the left inferior frontal lobe and its predominant attenuation is that it is slightly higher than the gray matter and there is a, a tiny focal uh, calcification evident here this is a tiny focal calcification there's this there's a uh, we can see that there is a tiny hyper attenuating focus or a focus of calcification we can see here and it is a heterogeneous mass in the left inferior frontal lobe on ct now the t2 weighted uh, sequence shows that there are numerous curvy linear flow voids of varying sizes uh, curvy linear flow voids of varying sizes and there is no edema and there is very little mass effect so also we can see that there is the corresponding flow related enhancement on the time of flight mra on the time of flight mra these are the other images and here we can see that the uh, injection of the left internal carotid artery shows the enlarged uh, here we can see that there is enlarged mca branches dense vascular nidus and early draining veins these are the early draining veins here this is the enlarged mca branch we can see this is the enlarged mca branch this is the dense vascular nidus and these are the early draining veins so this is a case of cerebral arteri arteriovenous uh, malformation and the other uh, differentials um, with MRI, these diagnoses of this large AVM is quite certain, but based on CT alone, if we are presented with CT alone, so the differentials will include intraaxial tumor, oligodendroglioma, uh, that is oligodendroglioma, and focal cortical dysplasia. So, coming towards next case. 
here we have a 25 year old man uh, who was found at home with decreased level of consciousness aphasia and spastic quadriparesis these are the images so we can see uh, that uh, there is a hyper intense signal on flare sequences here uh, so there is hyper intense signal uh, throughout the centrum semi ovale here throughout the centrum semi ovale the uh, posterior limb of the uh, internal capsule and uh, the deep cerebellar uh, white matter here this is the deep cerebellar white matter there is hyper intense signal here also in the uh, posterior limb of the internal capsule and uh, this deep cerebellar white matter is uh, sparing the dentate nuclei here the sparing of the dentate nuclei and basis pontus also basis pontus so the dwi sequence here uh, shows a restricted diffusion here there is a restricted diffusion in the deep white matter so restricted diffusion in the deep white matter this is the dwi sequence so uh, the main uh, diagnosis here is heroin leukoencephalopathy this is a case of heroin leukoencephalopathy that is called chasing the dragon and uh, the differentials will include hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and other toxic metabolic leukoencephalopathies next case a neonate with poor feeding hypertonia posterior arching of the back and a history of hyperbilirubinemia so these are the these are the images so this is the axial uh, this is the axial uh, flare image and uh, we can see here that uh, t1 and flare images and uh, we can see that there is uh, abnormal here there is abnormal symmetric hyper intensity symmetric hyper intensity uh, in the bilateral globus pallidae however the thalami and the putamens are totally normal thalami and putamina they are normal this these are the t1 and flare images and they are showing abnormal symmetric hyper intense areas in bilateral globus pallidae so and this uh, the relative this the relative hypo intensity of the white matter it is quite normal for neonate with immature myelination so the main diagnosis here is carnectaris this is the diagnosis this is the case this is the case of carnectaris and uh, the differentials will include uh, toxic metabolic manganese hyperalimentation carbon monoxide poisoning methyl malonic acidemia profound hypoxic ischemic injury and hepatic failure next case 27 year old woman with new onset of seizures these are the images so uh, we can see that uh, on mri uh, there is a t2 here there is a t2 hyper intense uh, T2 hyper intense and on the contrast in, uh, enhanced sequence we can see that there is no enhancement in this lesion there is a T2 hyper intense and uh, cortically, cortically based lesion in the right medial temporal lobe uh, with a multicystic or bubbly appearance the here this is the multicystic or bubbly appearance of this lesion it is uh, hyper intense on T2 and uh, here we can see that there is no diffusion restriction here this is the flare sequence uh, and uh, we can see that there is uh, no uh, it is iso or hypo uh, we can see that this iso to hypo on flare sequence and uh, this is the uh, cystic appearing multicystic bubbly appearing lesion in the right medial uh, temporal lobe so the main uh, differential here is dnet that is dis embryoplastic neuroepithelial tumor dnet and uh, the other differentials will include ganglioglioma uh, pleomorphic xanthoastrocytoma and uh, astrocytoma oligodendroglioma and focal cortical dysplasia so this is a case of dnet next case 63 year old man presenting with left sided pulsatile tinnitus these are the images
So, we can see here uh, that uh, the external carotid artery uh, injection shows uh, this is the uh, This is the external carotid artery and it shows multiple uh, small branches uh, which are arising here, here multiple uh, small branches arising from the occipital and middle meningeal arteries here, here arising from the occipital and middle meningeal arteries and uh, here we can see here we can see that there is rapid arteriovenous shunting with early opacification of the transverse and sigmoid sinuses here early opacification of the transverse and sigmoid sinuses now in this image we can see that uh, this is the internal carotid artery ICA in return and it shows uh, several uh, dural branches here. There are several dural branches arising from the cavernous ICA and uh, they are supplying uh, the fistula. Here. They are just supplying this fistula. And uh, there is no cortical, there is no cortical venous reflux here. So, this is a case of uh, dural arteriovenous fistula. And uh, the differentials will include uh, again AVM, arteriovenous malformation, and any vascular tumor like glomus jugulotympanicum. Next case 76 year old woman with chronic uh, lymphocytic leukemia now presenting with several weeks of worsening vision loss, facial droop, dysarthry, and memory loss. These are the images. So, we can see that the flare images here, the, the flare image shows several large areas of hyper intense signal in the white pattern of the right uh, cerebral hemisphere and in the uh, splenium here and in the splenium of the corpus callosum. Uh, there are small sites of cortical involvement present here and there is little mass effect, there is no mass effect. Also, on the post contrast sequence, we can see that there is no abnormal enhancement. There is no abnormal enhancement in this region. So, the diagnosis is progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy that is PML. So, this is a case of PML and uh, the differentials will include the differentials will include uh, the um, HIV encephalitis, other viral encephalitis that is CMV, ADAM and uh, the non-enhancing forms of toxoplasmosis or lymphoma in very rare cases. Next is uh, a three-year-old patient with uh, epilepsy and mild left-sided weakness. These are the images. So, we can see that on a sagittal T1 weighted MRI, uh, these images, they show uh, area of uh, hair we can see that there is area of uh, small irregular gyri and a serrated appearance to the uh, gray white matter junction here a serrated appearance to the gray white matter junction in the perisylvian cortex in the perisylvian cortex here in this region also the axial sequences t1 and T2, this is T1, this is T2. So, in the axial sequences, they confirm the abnormal here. They confirm the abnormal uh, small and uh, irregular gyri here. They confirm the abnormal small and irregular gyri. However, uh, there is no signal abnormality in this region. This is morphologically abnormal. This region is morphologically abnormal cortex. There is no signal abnormality in this region. So, basically the diagnosis is uh, polymicrogyria and the, the differentials will include focal cortical dysplasia, pachygyria and schizencephaly. Next case, 6 week old infant with new onset of seizures. These are the images.
So, uh, we can see here that uh, the right cerebral hemisphere is enlarged compared to the left cerebral hemisphere. Uh, also, this uh, right lateral ventricle is slightly larger and it is abnormally shaped here. This is slightly large compared to the left one. We can see here also it's large compared to the left one and it is of abnormal, slightly abnormal shape. And uh, in the white matter of the right cerebral hem hemisphere, there is a, a hyper intense, we can see that here, there is hyper intense signal on T1 and uh, on T1 weighted image. And uh, here we can see that it is hypo intense on T2 uh, for age here. So, this is hypo on T2 and uh, hyper on uh, T1, the white matter and uh, this area and uh, it is both uh, focal here, it is focal and it is diffuse uh, with the blurring of the gray-white differentiation. It is blurring the gray-white differentiation. So, the cortex here of the right hemisphere is, uh, this is the cortex of the right hemisphere, it is dysplastic, it is thick and uh, it is polymicrogyric, yeah, it is dysplastic, it is thick and it is polymicrogyric. So, the main uh, diagnosis here is of hemimegalencephaly, of course, considering the right cerebral hemisphere, this is a case of hemimegalencephaly and uh, the differentials will include gliomatosis cerebri hemiatrophy of one hemisphere which is seen in Rasmussen encephalitis, Rasmussen encephalitis. So, it can also be considered in the differential hemiatrophy of one hemisphere and gibberous sclerosis. Next case, newborn uh, with heart murmur, presenting with heart murmur and episodes of desaturation. These are the images. So, we can see that on the sagittal T1 weighted MRI and uh, the axial uh, uh, T2 weighted MRI, there is a large flow void along the expected location of the internal, uh, this is the large flow void along the expected location of the internal cerebral vein and the vein of Galen. And uh, also, uh, these uh, uh, aneurysmal veins, they are continuous with the median vein of the prosencephalon here. So, these aneurysmal veins are con uh, continuous with the median vein of the prosencephalon and there is no visible straight sinus. There is no visible straight sinus. Here, this is the sagittal MIP reconstruction from the MR angiography and it shows the flow related enhancement uh, in the enlarged arteries. Yes, we can see there is flow related uh, enhancement in the large in the enlarged arteries and in the aneurysmal vein consistent with the presence of a high flow fistula. There is no hydrocephalus. So, this is a case of vein of Galen aneurysmal malformation. This is a case of vein of Galen aneurysmal malformation and uh, the differentials will include uh, vein of Galen aneurysmal dilatation. So, we are going to put dilatation in the differential and this is a case of a vein of Galen aneurysmal malformation. Next case, three-year-old boy presenting with progressive swelling in the side of the face and periauricular region and uh, it is not responding to antibiotics. These are the images. So, we can see that on CT scan, uh, there is a destructive lesion of the left temporal bone with well-defined bone margins, very well-defined bone margins and uh, an associated enhancing soft tissue mass here. The left mastoid air cells are opacified. The MR images, uh, they, are, they are showing that this is the, this is the heterogeneously enhancing mass and it is mostly hyper intense on T2 weighted Im images here. It's mostly hyper intense on T2 uh, within and superficial to the left temporal bone. So, within and superficial to the left temporal bone, it's mostly hyper intense. And this is the heterogeneous enhancement of this lesion. So, this is a case of Langerhans cell histiocytosis. 
this is a case of Langerhans cell histiocytosis and the differentials will include the coalescent mastoiditis with extension of infection, uh, rhabdomyosarcoma, METS from neuroblastoma or leukemia and uh, dermoid or epidermoid. We can put them in the differential as well. Next case, these are the images. 20 months old is the patient. Patient is 20 months old presenting with lethargy and vomiting and these are the images. So, as we can see that there is a large uh, heterogeneously enhancing mass here. This is a large heterogeneously enhancing mass with the lobulated margin with lobulated margins and which is centered with the atrium of right lateral ventricle. So, this is the mass. Here we can see that there is a focal T1 hyper intensity within this tumor. Here, this is the focal T1 hyper intensity within the tumor, which is likely representing the intratumoral hemorrhage. And also, uh, there is this uh, here we can see, here we can see that uh, there is a fluid fluid level there, here, there is a fluid fluid level within the lateral ventricle due to the dependent hemorrhage. Here, there is a T2 hyper intensity and uh, enhancement noted possibly there is a t2 hyper intensity this is the, this this is t2 sequence so there is a hyper intensity and uh, uh, here we are talking about this this t2 hyper intensity and uh, enhancement possibly within the cerebral parenchyma along the tumor margins these are the margins of the tumor and we can see that there is hyper intensity along the tumor margins on this t2 weighted sequence uh, which can be considered that there is parenchymal invasion as well here, which is consistent with parenchymal invasion. So, this is a case of uh, basically choroid plexus carcinoma, a choroid plexus carcinoma and in the differentials, we can uh, put choroid plexus papilloma and uh, atypical thyroid rhabdoid tumor, ATRT, ependymoma, subependymal giant cell astrocytoma and central neurocytoma and uh, metastasis. Next case is uh, of a five month old patient presenting with nystagmus and uh, bilaterally abnormal optic discs on the eye examination. These are the images. So, we can see that uh, this is the 82 weighted MRI sequence, and uh, these uh, there is abnormally uh, small size of the bilateral optic nerves. The optic nerves are bilaterally of very small size and the optic chiasm as well shown here. See, so this is of abnormally small size. Also, the septum pellucidum is absent. The septum pellucidum is absent, optic chiasm is of small size and the optic nerves bilaterally they are also small. So, the basic, uh, the, the, the diagnosis here is of septo-optic dysplasia. This is a case of septo-optic dysplasia and the differentials will include T2 weighted MR, uh, the differentials will include the isolated optic nerve hypoplasia. We can put optic nerve hypoplasia in the uh, uh, differential and uh, holoprosencephaly and uh, obviously uh, because there is no septum pellucidum here, so we can say that the septum pellucidum is damaged. Uh, in long standing severe hydrocephalus cases. So, we can put that in the differential as well that there is damage to septum pellucidum in the long standing severe hydrocephalus. Next case 67 year old woman uh, presenting uh, who is uh, status is that post evacuation of a subdural hematoma. This is the image post evacuation of subdural hematoma. So, we can see that on CT uh, after evacuation of the hematoma, uh, there is extensive hypoattenuation in the right hemisphere uh, with loss of the gray white matter differentiation and uh, there is hemorrhage in the right temporal lobe. In this case, we can see that there is hemorrhage in the right temporal lobe. There is, this is the hemorrhage, hemorrhage in the right temporal lobe 
and this is the extensive hypoattenuation in the right hemisphere with loss of gray white differentiation the leftward leftward midline shift here is uh, uh, displacing the medial right frontal and parietal lobes the medial right frontal and parietal lobes are being displaced here under the fox fibrae uh, producing the transfalcine herniation this is the transfalcine herniation this here this is the transfalcine herniation and uh, it is being it is being produced here the transfalcine herniation uh, because of the displacement of the medial right frontal and parietal lobes under the fox cerebri there is complete effacement there is complete effacement of the basilar stems and compression of the brain stem so these are the hallmarks of uncle and transtentorial herniation here these are the hallmarks of uncle and transtentorial herniation complete effacement of the basilar cisterns and compression of the brain stem also there is a trapping of the left lateral ventricle here this the left lateral ventricle here is obviously trapped because of all this pushing effect and all this midline uh, shift and mass effect so the left lateral ventricle here is enlarged it is enlarged because of this pushing effect and uh, mass effect transfal sign and this is transfal sign herniation and this is the uncle and transtentorial herniation here so this is basically a case of transfal sign uncle and transtentorial herniation and uh, the treatment uh, uh, the so th th there is no differential here i mean this should be the only diagnosis here because the treatment is basically urgent and it involves the decompression craniectomy or removal of the underlying mass or hemorrhage next case 32 year old woman presenting with altered mental status these are the images so as we can see that uh, there are multifocal ill defined areas of signal abnormality here multi uh, multifocal ill defined areas of signal abnormality which are hyper intense on uh, flare this is a flare sequence and they are hyper intense on flare and uh, they are iso intense on uh, th this is the so they are hyper intense on uh, flare and iso intense on t1 weighted images and they involve the cortex the deep gray nuclei and the white matter of uh, both hemispheres here the white matter of both hemispheres and uh, we can see that there is mild mass effect with the sulcal effacement here sulcal sulci are effaced here this mild mass effect with sulci effacement however this is the post concussion sequence and this is the dwi so there is no enhancement there is no abnormal enhancement or there is no restricted diffusion apparent in these regions apparently so there is no uh, restricted diffusion or there is no abnormal enhancement in these regions so the diagnosis here is of gliomatosis cerebri this is a case of gliomatosis cerebri and uh, the differentials will include adam uh, that is acute disseminated encephalomyelitis or any other demyelinating or dysmyelinating disorder viral encephalitis vasculitis lymphoma and pml that is progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy next case 67 year old woman uh, status is post cardiac arrest with normal ct at the time of admission these are the images so there is a hyper intense signal on uh, we can see that there is a hyper intense signal here on flare and obviously and of course on dwi images here and uh, in the bilateral hippocampi this is the these are the bilateral hippocampi and uh, basal ganglia uh, here these are the basal ganglia so they are normal hyper intense basal ganglia bilateral hippocampi here bilateral hippocampi basal ganglia and the cerebral cortex diffusely 
diffusely hyper intense. Also, we can see the, on the ADC maps, uh, they are showing that there is restricted diffusion in these regions. Okay, in these sites, there is restricted diffusion here on the ADC maps. Also, there is mild cortical swelling, sorry, there is mild cortical swelling and sulcal effacement uh, in these regions, mild there is cortical swelling and sulcal effacement in these uh, regions uh, which is consistent with cerebral edema, diffusely, I am talking about diffusely here. Yeah. So, there is this mild cortical swelling and uh, sulcal effacement. So, which is consistent with cerebral edema. So, this is a case of uh, hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and uh, the differentials will include uh, Kruzfeldt-Jakob disease, mitochondrial encephalopathy and uh, any toxic injury. Next case of a 48 year old woman presenting with headache, these are the images. So, the post contrast uh, T1 uh, image here it shows an intracerebral uh, complex, intracerebral complex of uh, enhancing curvilinear, enhancing curvilinear vascular structures in the right temporal lobe and uh, they are coalescing to form a large vein. This is a large vein that passes through the cerebral parenchyma to drain superficially. It is passing through the cerebral parenchyma to drain superficially. So, this is a case of a developmental venous anomaly that is DVA and uh, the differentials will include uh, again developmental venous anomaly that is DVA and arteriovenous malformation can be AVM can be obviously included in the differential. Next case of a 56 year old man presenting with right uh, facial numbness and ophthalmoplegia. These are the images. So, there is a mass, it is quite evident here, there is a mass extending along the expected course of the right trigeminal nerve from the pons to the Meckel's cave and the inferior cavernous sinus. This is the mass here. And this mass has a relatively low signal on T1 here. So, this is the mass and it has this, this is the mass on uh, we can see that this is the uh, T2 weighted sequence and this is the T1 weighted sequence and it has relatively low signal on T1 and T2 weighted sequences here. It has relatively low signal and also there is this uh, slightly heterogeneous enhancement there is a slightly heterogeneous enhancement on post contrast sequences. So, the, this mass is uh, expanding the right, uh, the right inferior cavernous sinus and it is uh, extending uh, towards the uh, it is extending towards the uh, here we can see that it is extending towards the superior orbital fissure here. So, this is the superior orbital fissure and this mass is expanding the right cavernous sinus inferior, inferior right cavernous sinus is extending towards the uh, right superior orbital fissure. Also, uh, we can see that uh, uh, there is here we can see that uh, uh, there is relative atrophy of the pterygoid muscles, there is relative atrophy of the pterygoid muscles here. There's, there's relative atrophy of the pterygoid muscles uh, on the right compared to the left. So, this is the left pterygoid muscle, this is the right pterygoid muscle and there's relative atrophy here. So, this is a case of trigeminal schwannoma. The differentials will include uh, meningioma, metastasis, perineural tumor spread and chondrosarcoma.